How you doing? Ralph Roll with Drum Dog, and today we are going to talk about double stroke rolls. Now, when I was uh, growing up, um, I was very, very fortunate to um, have a friend named Jerry Horde, who lived in the building behind me in 1575, and and one Sunday morning he was drumming on the fence outside of my building. And I looked out, and it was a beautiful, sunny Sunday day. And I asked him, I said, what's going on? He says, I'm going over to drum corps practice. Uh, I said, cool. He said, would you like to go? And I said, I got to ask my mother. So it was fortunate that his mother and my mother were friends. My mother was strict, and she picked all my friends. But I was allowed to go to drum corps practice. And the minute I walked through the door, the bug of drum corps had bit me. Now, if you don't know what a drum corps is, I don't want to compare it to a marching band because most drum corps people will find me and kill me. But drum corps is like a marching band, but extremely precisioned in many, many ways. Google drum and bugle corps. uh, You will see some amazing young musicians that are doing some amazing things. But what I learned in drum corps was my rudiments. And one of the very important rudiments is a double stroke roll. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, how do you get your technique on a double stroke roll? Now, what is a double stroke roll? A double stroke roll is when you are playing a double on each hand. Right, left, right, left, throughout. Double stroke roll. Now, what you're trying to achieve with a double stroke roll is clarity throughout the roll. So if you're using it on a kit, if you're doing a roll on the snare, uh, you want to hear that clarity throughout the the entire roll that you're you're doing. Now, the reason why I moved from the uh, snare drum to the drum pad is because I wanted you to be able to see and hear every single piece and every single nuance of what that roll is, is all about. And using a drum pad is something that I hope you're using uh, to be able to emulate a snare without the noise. (laughs) So um, this was used in my house a lot because my mother didn't want me to play drums that loud. But learning how to play a double stroke roll, I started out, first of all, it's about how you hold the stick. Now, when I am doing a double stroke roll, the first thing is that the index finger, the index finger here is between the both of the, the knuckles, first and second, of the index finger. And right opposite is my thumb. And then the rest of the fingers are coming around the stick and not so, not so tight that the stick doesn't have any bounce to it, but enough room that you're still controlling the stick, but that is also in your hand. And it's not open, because the faster you go, the less control you have with the less amount of fingers on the stick. Okay, same thing, same exact exact thing with the right hand. And what I learned to do is in order to get my uh, posture correct is I would practice in a mirror. And the reason why I was practicing in a mirror because I play match grip. And match grip, you want to match your hands. So both hands are holding the stick exactly the same way. And what I'm doing is I'm looking in the mirror while I'm playing to make sure that my sticks are going the same height, that the volume of each hand is the same. If you're right-handed, more than likely you have a dominant right hand, so you're gonna have to put more practice into your left hand. And the same thing if you're left-handed, it's probably your dominant hand, you gotta put more work into your right hand. So one of the great ways to do that is to use a metronome, watch yourself in the mirror, watch your posture, make sure you're sitting relaxed, your hands are exactly the same, and you start out slow, you're watching your hands, and you're relying on the bounce. You're not stroking with your hands, if you see my hands. So as I go faster, the fulcrum, the, the, the pivot point is going to go to my elbow, and I'm going to be giving a lot of movement in my arms, but my arms will still remain relaxed, and my hands will still remain controlled while I'm doing the double stroke roll. Now today, we're going to start with a very simple exercise like this. 
So it's single, 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 double, 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 double. That's going to be the exercise. And we're going to start at 80 beats per minute. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Now, if you notice, I'm watching my hands in the mirror for height and that my grip is matching and I'm holding the sticks the same on both hands. So once you get it at that tempo and it's nice and controlled and the sound is even, one hand is not louder than the other. I'm going to increase it to 90. That's 90 beats per minute. Same thing. One, two, watching my hands. Always watching my hands, making sure that both hands are even. My hands are at a nice level and a nice sound. So every, every double stroke is exact. So the first hit is not as loud as the second. Let's increase it to 100 beats per minute. Same thing, watching my hands relaxed. If you notice, there's hardly any arm movement coming from me right, right, right now. Right now, very simple. Up here, my elbows, I'm not flailing, I'm just very relaxed. Let's go to 110. Same thing. Watch how relaxed I am and watch what I'm doing as far as the, looking in the mirror at my hands. One, two, three. Now every time you do this, you want to do it for at least five minutes straight. Have the discipline to hold it down at that tempo for five minutes straight throughout. So you want the same thing, you're listening for sound, you're listening for clarity, you're listening for the right exact blend of both hands. Okay, let's take it up to 120. Same thing. One, two, three, four. Now you notice when I'm going faster, the fulcrum has changed from my wrist to my elbow. So now I'm using more of my arm because the faster I go, I'm going to need more power and I'll get more power if I, in my technique, if I use my arm. One thirty. Same thing, 140, let's go up, let's go up to 150, 160. You notice how relaxed I stay. And I'm watching my hands in the mirror. One eighty. One, two, 
One, two, three, four. Now I'm gonna change it a little bit and I'm gonna do the singles uh, twice as much and I'm gonna do the doubles twice as much. So take a listen. One, two, three, four. See my arms? Watch my arms. Okay, now. This is 200 beats per minute. One, two, one, two, three, four. Notice my hands, same relaxed, very relaxed. Same open blend, but I'm pushing from here. I'm pushing down into the drum pad. I'm pushing in to get more of a bounce and more of the fulcrum to come from my arms. If you notice, my hand is turning just a little bit. Pushing into the pad. Let's take it way up. That's 230 beats. Now, if I cut it in half, is one. it's going to be, uh, let me see what's happening. Let's go up to 240. Ready? Still relaxed, trying to make sure it's even. Pushing in. Okay, now let's back this down to 120. Same thing, half the, half the, the uh, the metronome speed, but I'm going to be playing at the same tempo. If you start out slow and you give yourself time, you will be able to match your grip. Use your ears. You're training your ears at the same time while you're, while you're learning the rolls. And you can bring that speed up. Right now, I said I brought it down at halftime at the 120. Let's just go up. Let's see what I could do here. Let's see. 140. Extended roll. Okay, it is doable. If I can do it, obviously you could do it too. It just takes practice. Some I know some drummers that can play that role much faster and clean. But when you're using it on the drum set and applying it, it sounds really great when you learn how to do the technique of a, a double stroke roll. It can be applied in so many different ways, doing so many different things. Uh, and let's just recap real quick. Relaxed, holding your sticks between the uh, first and second knuckle of the index finger. Your thumb is opposite that finger. All other fingers wrap around, but you're gonna give it a little bit of room so the stick can bounce, but you're controlling it. You sit in the mirror, you have good posture, you sit up straight, you relax your arms. Your pad is at a, is at a, a height that is good for your arm movement, not too high, not too low. And you're watching, you're looking at your hands, you're making the adjustments, you're seeing that both hands are match grip, and you're trying to make sure that your roll is perfect in sound. Not one hand louder than the other. No, you want it to be even. That's what you want. You want the sound to be nice and even throughout.
And that's how you get a double stroke roll. 